Welcome back everybody. Today I am going to show you how you can actually create a, how you can format a partition. So uh, we are going to go ahead and type in mkfs. Now mkfs is an extremely simple and easy and yet a powerful tool for formatting partitions. So if I just type, press tab twice here, I'm going to get a list of possible options. And amongst those possible possible options is the BTRFS, which was to be the future. I'm not sure where they stand with that at the moment. The default one is still XFS, as we saw during the installation procedure. And I am using Red Hat 7 here. So it, I have updated it to the latest version, of course. Uh, but it's all, I mean, it's still XFS, it's not BTRFS, even though there was a lot of talk about this BTRFS. Uh, why? Well, BTRFS actually possessed the ability to undelete things. So once you deleted something in Linux, you could actually undelete it, which was fascinating. Yeah. When you delete something in Linux, it's gone. I do believe that I've stated this something in the previous, something of a kind, the previous tutorials, when you use the rm command or something like that, the file that you have deleted, it's gone quite literally and rather difficult to get back. Anyway, that's uh, that's one of the, well, one of the reasons why they had BTRFS, but it's still not in its prime, so we're going to have to wait a little bit further for that, even though it is available here. Anyway, let's go ahead and use the default one, which is xfs, oops, dot xfs, and we would like to get a help menu for this, so we can, I'm going to go ahead and set the label for the drive. Uh, I don't think I'm going. I do not believe that I shall set anything else. I do not think that there really is a need at this point of time. This is a very nice option here. It says force overwrite. If you're getting any warnings, if you're being stopped by the system, you are being stopped for a reason. However, if you really don't care about that reason or reasoning in general, just go ahead and force the procedure for in whatever manner you see fit. Uh, I am not going. I do not think that there will be a need for me to force the procedure. I do believe that I will be able to simply format the partition with a proper label without any difficulties of whatsoever. So, what shall we place as a label? Well, what do I see on my table? I see coffee, but I do believe I have used that already for labeling another partition. Uh, well, let's go ahead. Let's go with spoon. So, spoon dev stb2 I should organize some sort of a competition I had an idea to organize a competition for names like whoever would provide 10 best uh, naming suggestions would get coupons for pretty much any other course or something of a kind that was just an idea that I had in mind so people could submit their own list of names that I could use in the tutorials and if, if one list was truly innovative and kind of funny and yet not that vulgar because I do have to limit myself to what I'm saying in these tutorials, I would actually use it and that person would get a prize. That was just an idea that uh, ran through my head. Let me know what you think about it and see, let's see if we can, I'll see if I can implement it. Anyway, type in mkfs uh, xfs uh, dash l for the label and then dev stb2. Press enter. There you go. It's up and running. The partition has been uh, formatted and now it is an XFS file system. Uh, what should we... There is another tool that I can share with you here. You can paste it. So it's LSBLK. Uh, it has... Just use its help menu. You. You're gonna see a lot of things there. But basically like this you can see you can specify the fields that you would like to see so name label size uh, output I can also say instead of dash o dash a for all and here I, you can see pretty much all the information in regard to 
particular disks, but let me just go ahead and clear that and use O. So what what would be like so name? I would like a label and I would like size. Oh, have I? Oh, of course. Well, it's not a zero genius. It's O. There we go. And we have a name, we have a label, and we have a size. So I have named SDB1 while I was not recording coffee. And I have named SDB2 while I was recording spoon, which is 10 gigabytes and coffee is 5 gigabytes. Somehow this doesn't make any sense. Coffee should be bigger than a spoon but it's not the way it is in this tutorial anyway. So this is just one of those tools that can help you get around things. You see you get a really nice listing and you can format it any way you like which is amazing. You can also say all for pretty much all the information that can be listed that can fit the screen. It will be listed out for you and you'll be able to see it there. Quite simple, no big, no big deal. Uh, very easy commands to use. It's not a hassle to use them or anything of a kind. Uh, you can run f, you, you can run fdisk shell one more time if you want to have a look here for, in regard to the SDB. But you won't really see much here. You will only see the partitions of the disk. You won't see their mount points. And we will talk a little bit about mount. I mean, I haven't passed in any of the arguments I've just used. I have actually have passed just one argument and I wanted to list the partitions and disks. That's pretty much it. Uh, but later on we will talk, I will say a few things about the mount points, about mounting the partitions, uh, manually that is, and how you can actually mount some other devices as well, such as USBs or something of a kind, pretty much the same way you would mount anything. There is a universal way of mounting things in Linux. Anyway, I would like to bid you all farewell until we see each other in the follow-up tutorial, and I would like to wish you a download of flock with this.